What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Pascal, from The Pascal Show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm here with somebody who is absolutely fantastic. She just wrote her second book. It is called Walking in My Joy in These Streets. <laughs> I like to say in these streets. Uh -huh. Please welcome the vivacious, the vibrant, the queen of all trades. Let's be real. Jennifer Lewis, what's up? Hey, Pascal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, what a big day. No what an amazing day. I am sold out here in St. Louis at my alma mater where I trained classical theater. Yeah. What wow. does it feel like to be back? I well, know you've been here. A I, I, I look, I went to my hometown, Kenlock, Missouri, and it's even worse than what I seen it when I was here before. Yeah. At least there were bricks, you know, the buildings are torn down. Kenlock is a ghost town now, but I hear they're trying to rebuild it. Yeah. So if they do, Fingers crossed. there will be a Jennifer Lewis Youth Center. Really? I am so, well, I got to find the money. But here's <laughs> the thing. <laughs> Go ahead, baby. What's next? It. What's next question? No, no, no. I, I, it, the nostalgia, the memories are overwhelming. I went to this school. I was, I had bipolar disorder. I didn't know I was a terror on this campus. Yeah. I knew everybody from the president to the janitor. Like an ever-ready bunny running amok. The theater. I walked in a theater in Cincinnati once. Yeah. Little girl opened the door. She says, are you, are you in the theater? I said, bitch, I am the theater. <laughs> <laughs> She was like, oh, shit, no. <laughs> but uh, was it, I was unmedicated, but go on. <laughs> no, no, hey, we're going to tap on that a little absolutely, bit. Absolutely. Yeah, bit absolutely. This, your story here, this book, I got to tell you, I mean, I, you know, as you can see, I got, I got notes and all that stuff. I'm telling you, this book was an absolute page turner. Uh, I couldn't put it down. I want you to know that I appreciate you doing your homework. Some people come in, they don't know what. I'm like, honey, did you? I'm like, honey, did you read the book? Fuck out of here. Right, right. No, no, <laughs> Is it okay if I cuss? Yeah, you can. Thank God. So what, say whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> there you go. Let's go. There you go. So, I'll keep it at a minimum. So I know you already had a book before. This is your second book. So does it feel the same? Does it, is it the same feeling? Because I always hear that. Absolutely first not. Book is like a, your, first, your first child. Second one, not Absolutely so not. This is a baby, for sure. Yeah. It's very hard to write, to form. I think I had to switch two editors in the middle of it. I was in Cambodia, still writing it. I was writing on Walking in My Joy in Kathmandu, Nepal. There were final touches, emails. I'm in Cambodia. Ain't no connection, you stupid bitch. I was so mad. I didn't know what to do. I was like, I'm on vacation, you fool. Finish that book. <laughs> but we finished it, and I'm very proud of walking in my joy. Mm -hmm. The memoir, the memoir was hard. Yeah. I had to go deep in my childhood. But I wanted to give all my secrets to the next generation mm. because I think we're sick as our secrets. I'm free. That's why I can kick my leg up. Because I'm free. Yes. I went and did the work. I did the work off camera, off stage. I went and took care of my bipolar disorder so that I could enjoy the fruits of my labor. <sighs> and now I'm in my skin. Mm -hmm. So when I got my star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and I told those people, I don't need this star to tell me I'm a star. I'm grateful. Damn right. And I couldn't have got it because everybody on the internet was like, oh, it's about time. Give Auntie her flowers, which I love, and it gives me strength. Yeah. But had I received it a day before, I wouldn't have uh, been ready. Yeah. You can't get anything until you're ready. Right. Can't get anything for free either. You got, well. Got to put that 
Well, that Blood, was. Sweat and tears in it. Yeah, but that it one man. Really yeah, but it was one that one man in Chicago. That's, <laughs> everything's been great. That one man in Chicago. <laughs> That motherfucker, you know, it's always Chicago. Right, right. It's always blame Chicago for everything. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> Why well, I did this, not no. It was that one man in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say this though too. I didn't get a chance to say this, and it might be a little late to say it, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Congratulations on getting that star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. So I want to say that first. Okay. That blew so my big. mind. It blew my mind. Can you take me back on that when you got the phone call or when you got yes. the scroll dropped yes, off I the will. Falcon? How did you get this going on? Yes, I will. I was in my garden. COVID had just come about. I was planting aeoniums, my favorites, because I knew we'd have time. Maxine Waters called me at the beginning of COVID. She said, Jennifer... Hunker down. This thing is going to be around for a while. <sighs> so I started planting in my garden. And the phone rang. Right. There's never been tears in my garden. There were tears that day. God. And I sat there in my garden and I wept. Enjoy. I think my whole life passed before me in that moment. All the shows, all the movies, all the TV, all the concerts all over the world, including Antarctica. <laughs> so yeah, that was a moment to hear it for the first time. And it was the same feeling when Dr. Strobel called me here from Webster University and said, We'd like to honor you with a doctorate degree. That's honor. I, I just, I said, Dr. Strobel, let me call you back. See, I feel my feelings. Mm -hmm. And when you're bipolar and you don't know until you're 33, you're in the habit of extreme emotions. You see, our emotions are very high and very low. Right. That never goes away with me. I mean, not the mania and the depression, the personality, right. the charisma, you know, that Jennifer Lewis, you know, <laughs> that Jennifer motherfucking Lewis. <laughs> Read the book, bitches, and don't come for me. Right. Who's got the audacity to change their middle name to motherfucking? It's on record. <laughs> That's how I sign my checks, motherfucker. <laughs> Big chicks. <laughs> Don't ask it. me for no money. You know what I say? I say, uh, big chicks. Don't ask me for no money. <laughs> I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Obviously, we all want to talk a little Come bit. Come on. About this I'm book, ready. But I really do want to talk about a little bit of your recent TV show. I love that for you. Oh. And let me tell you something. Um, man, is yeah. this. Such a well-rounded performance, yeah. I have to say. It's my best work. It's your best yeah. work. It's an environment that I'm allowed to create like that, to develop a character, a real character, not, you know. I mean, they were real, but, you know, I'm a natural. Mm. I can turn that on, the mamas and the grandmamas and the funny girl. Right. But I turned it on for this, baby. I turned it up. I had time mm -hmm. to actually use the tools from Webster University. I mean, I went into Stanislavski, right. Feldenkrais, you know, Uta Hagen, all of it. Stella Adler. Stella <laughs> Adler. And all yes, that. all of me. Yes, baby. Tell me a little bit, because I know in this book, you know, you talk about, in the very beginning, you start talking about how Kenya brought you in. Yeah. You talk about oldish. Yeah. Okay. So I, I have to ask you, is that still in the works or no? What oh, but darling, COVID, COVID really did it. Oh. Lawrence's uh, schedule, my schedule, mm -hmm. it just, it was impossible. And between me and you, like in the book, you don't want to be number one or two on the call sheet at 65 years old. Gotcha. Shh, you know how much work that is? It's a lot. You, you were talking about 
just doing press alone. Back and forth, New York, the kick, kick, kick. Forget about it. Yeah. I mean, no, I couldn't something. do it. I couldn't do it. I had waited for someone to say that to me all my life. We're going to give you your show. Mm -mm. No. Sorry. And I'm, that could still happen. Not oldish, but my show. Right. It'll either be me talking to kids and young adults, kind of shrinking them a little bit, slapping them in the face, you know, grow up, plug head. <laughs> Oh, it could be a variety show where I sing and everything. Mm -hmm. I would sing on that show too. I think at this point, <sighs> most producers would let me do what I want to do. They know I bring the fire. They know I bring the real. So yes, love, I love that for you. On Showtime. <laughs> on Showtime, check it out. <laughs> Stream it now. Hey. Available now. Hey. Um, at a theater near you. A theater now, I know you're going to bring up Jackie's Back. Let's just say it before I forget. Jackie's Back is on Tubi. Oh, it's on Tubi. Hey. There you go. There you go. Y'all go and check it out. Gay boys. <laughs> Baby, they love my ass, don't they? Ah, la. All right, story. I'm in Petra, Jordan. I just went around the world. I want to climb up. I'm 65, I ain't got no business going up there, mm. but I've kept myself healthy. And that's why I travel so much now before my knees go. Take care of your knees, dumbasses. They are, <laughs> <laughs> they are the first to go. Make sure the big, your knee is over your big toe. Don't have it going up. Keep it parallel. Baby, when that pop, oh God, I remember when it happened. I said, okay, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yeah, that hurt. Now, you know, y'all know I got this 25-year-old soul. But my knees tell me I'm 65. Ooh. I, it's all right. I can only imagine. But wait a minute. So the boy in Jordan, mm -hmm. <laughs> a kid. So I said, I need you to help me up this mountain. It's Petra. I want to climb up like those people. And he took my hand. I said, I, 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 I. Wrist, wrist. And on three, you will pull. He said, OK. Cute as a button. I said, now, do you know what a homosexual is? He said, yes, I do. Very smart kid. I said, 10,000 gay men will fly here if you let me fall. <laughs> and they will kill you. Yes. <laughs> It'll be a wrap, son. Baby, that little boy took me pulling his ass off. <laughs> and I got up there. I was very proud of myself that I'd kept myself healthy enough to get climb to the top of Petra. Right. Let's, let's talk about uh, bipolar disorder, because I know that you put so much on stage, right? Yes, yes. You give so much yes. to your fr friends and family, the close ones. You are Hollywood's auntie and all that, right? Okay. When do you find time to find balance for yourself? Because you're giving everything. I take it. I take time for myself. I think human beings have one job and one job only. Mm. Self-care. Nope, two, and vote. Yes. All you got to do is take care of yourself in life and vote. Those are the two things. Facts. Fuck taxes. I don't pay me that I'm rich. Go on. <laughs> Feds aren't watching. What? They ain't listening. Char, they get me so bad. I'll be like, I just made that. There's always that struggle, right, of when you find out, how you find out, um, if you're you know, dealing with some sort of <laughs> mental health issue. Um, and especially in the black community, it is something that is still taboo, right? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, because I feel like it's still not really out there yet. Listen, to I have to tell you, when I did, I, when I, what'd you say last? I, don't I would just love cut to you. make get people more in tune. On Absolutely. That. Listen, I found out on the Mother Black Hollywood book tour, I found out that it's not so taboo. They are starting to do counseling in churches. 
See, I went all over for that book tour. I didn't have to this time. Hey, you know, people know I'm black as shade. Yeah. I'm famous now. Oh, God, God, I'm serious. That's when I found out I was. No, this book tour I found out. Really? How popular I am. What? No, no, no. Baby, they came running. I'd never seen anything like it. Even after so many seasons? After, no, no. Uh, Good Morning America, it was early, and I thought, you know, I'd walk right into the building. There was a mob. I went, ah! <laughs> COVID, you know, and that uh, had a part in it. I was like, get away from me, you know, because yeah. I had to stay healthy. I had such a book tour to do, campaigning for Stacey Abrams and Val Demings and Karen Bass and yeah. So much is going on, but yeah, when I got to Flint and Detroit and Chicago, people were becoming more in tune with it. The country is starting to wake up more to mental illness, yeah. especially after COVID. But even before that, the churches, the youth centers, the hospitals, Mental illness is out of control. Yeah. So much depression. Y'all, I'm so glad I did the work. Yeah. 35 years I was depressed. Mania, Tough. but I didn't know. Yeah. Crying, those tears, that pain became a performance to me. Yeah. Bipolar disorder worked for me and against me. Mostly against. What are your thoughts on this recent shooting that happened here in St. Louis at the I just, CBPA. I just heard about it. I did. I just heard about it. Yeah. I will be dedicating the show to them tonight. That's beautiful. Um, I didn't know about this one. You know, on the first book tour with Mother Black Hollywood, I went into the trenches. I mean, what I got to sell books? Come on. Yeah. I went in the trenches. If I had a book signing in Detroit, I said, you drive me to Flint. If I was in Fort Lauderdale, I said, you drive me to Parkland. The day I was supposed to go to Parkland, there was a bomb threat at the school. You know what these, the trauma these kids are going to have. I'll sing you the song I wrote after Parkland. Ooh, Pascal. And these dumbass Republicans want to give the kids a gun. That crazy Marjorie, whatever the fuck her name is. And they the want to give the teachers and the children guns. Okay, do that. Let them shoot each other. I thought this wouldn't happen. I'm out here for these kids. I wish you would come for me, bitch, like Morpheus in the Matrix. Come on. And like Maxine Waters, you better shoot straight. <laughs> Facts. My little nephew came come running up to me at the beginning of COVID, because we all contemplated our death. We didn't know what this thing was. Mm -hmm. So my nephew and I would, my great nephew, and we're talking about, I wanted to get my will changed and everything. People I like, I don't like them no more. So anyway, hey, hey, <laughs> that's funny. No, it's not. It's true. My five-year-old nephew came running. He said, Auntie, you're not afraid to die? I said, no, I'm not. Why? I said, because I've lived. Oh, honey, I've Oh, you have. Oh, my God. And I'm even in this book, my Lord, just this book alone, <laughs> my Lord, you have. How about the Cape Buffalo <laughs> and the <laughs> Serengeti, that bitch? That was insane. I said, bitch, who you getting ready to gorge? <laughs> you know the fuck I am? I said, are you black? I'm black. I got to get back to blackish. <laughs> you can't kill me out here. So I knew when she, when she came out of that brush. I knew she had kids, I was dead. Mm -hmm. 
but I had a master warrior with me. Oh my God, when I told my girlfriend about, gotta read the book, about the Cape Buffalo and the Serengeti. Yeah. My girlfriend said, I don't care nothing about that Cape Buffalo that almost killed you. I want to know what you were doing with that 10 feet Maasai warrior. <laughs> hey, I didn't tell her that. <laughs> That's a whole other book. You got that right. <laughs> it will start the next book. Yes, yes. We got to jump into a little bit of like the pop culture stuff real quick. Go get them. So I know that you've had a little bit to say about Kanye West in your book. I'm sick of Kanye. Boom. I was sick of him before he did all this mess. I don't care what he's dealing with. Okay. Shut your fucking mouth. You go sit down somewhere. Mm -hmm. All them kids that look up to his ass. Get, hey, Kanye. My name is Jennifer Lewis. I'm famous too. Not as famous as you. That does not excuse you from doing what you should be doing. Go get help, baby. Your children are looking at you. You hush now. I know what pain you're going through. I went through it. Do it for your children. Mm. Do it for the next generation. They gave you everything. They listen to your music just because you consider yourself a genius, and a lot of people do. Van Gogh was a genius. He cut his fucking ear off. Mm -hmm. You hush now and go get some help. Find me, call me. Let me help you. That baby's so sick. I think he needs to And that 50, 50? That whole thing about the taxes on the rich, I didn't read it. It was a headline and it made me sick. The poor made you. Now you don't want to take taxes. You hush to. Y'all did that shit right before the election. Broke my heart. I said, what are these motherfuckers doing? You made some people vote for Trump. Yes, you did. Sit down somewhere. Give back to the generation that made you a star. Mm -hmm. All of y'all give back. Stop being so selfish and arrogant, privileged. We made you. Well, I didn't. I don't know who the fuck y'all were. I didn't even know the music. But the kids do. Shut the fuck up. There's some serious shit going on right now. You said in your book, leading with love starts within us, mm -hmm. right? So do you mind expanding on that a little? What got me into therapy was this quote from a dear girlfriend. She said, Jenny, I was under the table. I was just sick, manic, didn't know what to do with myself. I don't know why I was under that table. When you find yourself on the kitchen table, it's time to get some help. <sighs> she looked down at me. She was stirring a pot of gumbo or something. And she never looked at me. She just kept stirring. I'm over there under the table, just having a conversation. I don't know what I was doing. And she had seen me have a nervous breakdown when my best friend died from AIDS. She said, good Lord, Jenny, you need help. I was, when she told me the first time, I was like, oh, girl, ain't nothing wrong with me. Let's go. And then when I was under that table, she was stirring that pot. She didn't even look at me. She just went, Jenny, 
There is no greater journey than the journey within. There's a journey within? What the fuck? <laughs> right. A journey within. It excited me. Hmm. Mm. I had been into the you know, health, uh, self-care and all that stuff. Nobody had ever put it like that. That's started. why you got to have girlfriends that'll tell you your boyfriend is an asshole. Well, I don't have to tell you that story. Tony. Tony Wilson. Got his ass, didn't I? God damn, I put that bitch in jail. <laughs> hey, titties and hip for my book. Hey, baby. That motherfucker. Jennifer Lewis is emerging from a real life drama. He was charming. Handsome. Lewis says she was captivated after meeting Antonio Marriott Wilson in 2015 at the gym. Wilson eventually asking Lewis to invest $50,000 in his technology business, a business that didn't exist. Her new guy wasn't heaven sent at all. I wasn't paying attention. That's why I gave it to you. Mm. I knew he was still out there. Yeah. And he'd hurt other people as he had hurt me. I've never known pain. That was the day I realized why people did drugs. Mm. I didn't know you could be alive and be in that much pain because my mother died the same day, on 9-11 of all days. Yeah. And my girlfriend who was with me had been in 9-11, and there we were, standing in a line at a precinct. I went, God, Jenny, what you done done now? I got him, kept a uh, private eye on his ass for five years. They caught him. That's when, when the private eye, no, I care about people. Absolutely. And especially vulnerable women mm -hmm. and vulnerable men. Scamming and stealing. Who are you people that can do that so often and naturally? with no, well, so many fucking sociopaths in the world. Have, they have no feelings. So when I saw that I was in that much pain mm -hmm. and all the tools I have, all the therapy, I said, well, what other women must be going through? I called TMZ. I said, I got a story for you. Hardest thing. That was personal. I was embarrassed, 50 grand, you son of a bitch. I told him that's sushi to me, motherfucker. No, it wasn't, I was fucked up. <laughs> 55, ah! yeah. that's why I had to, well no, but let me tell you why I got him. Pussy's pussy, dick is dick. But you used your children. You going down, motherfucker. Fucker, don't fuck with no kid around me. And, and you Ooh. took him down. Eight with years. The Eight years yeah. I got him. Yeah, He's sitting in jail, yeah, son of a bitch. It's all in this book. I'm telling y'all, you need to see. Mm. You need to check out this book. Um, but I was hoping that you would send us off with a little bit of... Come on, let's go. Pascal, I wrote this song after Parkland. Our children shouldn't have to run from bullets. <laughs> Our children shouldn't have to run from bullets. They should never, ever even see a gun. They should be somewhere having fun. Jesus, what have we done, y'all? Why'd I have to write this song? America, shame. America, 
we got to change. I want to say thank you so much for being here. Um, and uh, you guys have got to go check out Walking in My Joy in the streets. I like to say streets, but I don't want nobody hey. fucking with me in these streets. I don't want no, but you know the rest. I do have a little gift for you. Ah, uh, damn, it better be expensive. Uh, yes. <laughs> What, well, uh, you want me to open it right it came, now? It came from me. I made oh, it with my own two hands. You did not make this. I did. It's my own clothing line. Oh, sucky, sucky. It's called, uh... Oh, my God. Beautiful I... Collections. Shut up. Yeah, and those are the pants? And these are pants. You know this and is I how these, I dress, right? I figured. Yeah, it is. I've seen you out here. Comfortable. And uh, I made them especially sparkly for you. So. Remember the sweatshirt for Kaepernick when um, yes. the Emmys? Yes. You know, you know Shangela, right? Yes, I do. So DJ. I called him, yeah, I called him and said, DJ, does this look okay for the Emmys? Because I'm protesting tonight. He said, oh no, baby. You're gonna put some bling on that. Mm -hmm. The doorbell rang in 20 minutes. There were three drag queens at my door with lots of beads. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, honey, sure. Bunny. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Great interview. Oh, thank you. P A S C A L. You are now rocking with that dude Pascal. We be going wild.